Welcome back to the Business Forum Show. I'm Kevin Hunter. Amy Nelson is in as our co-host today, and our guest is John Lamy from Lamy Law Firm. Welcome to the show, John. Thanks, Kevin. Get us started by talking a little bit about what your area of practice is, because as we all know, there's all these specializations in law, just as there are specializations in medicine. So talk about what area that you're specializing in the legal field. Uh, that would be business and personal bankruptcy. I've been filing business and personal bankruptcy since uh, April 2003. Over that 10-year period, I've done approximately 2,600 business and personal filings. Okay. I have a real quick question for you when you mentioned about business and personal. Do you ever have situations where you have a business owner that's that's filing a personal bankruptcy that does not affect the business? Um I, I've obviously heard it the other way around, but you ever have a situation like that where the the a business owner has a personal bankruptcy going on, but the business is unaffected? Does that ever occur? It, it does occur. Uh, the way it works is the business usually has personal guarantees. So if mm -hmm. the business is actually paying that monthly payment, we would list that vendor in the personal filing to get rid of the owner's personal guarantee. Mm -hmm. And then as long as the business is paying on that agreement or contract, that vendor can't call it in default because the owner filed. Mm -hmm. It's a technical default. You know, no judge is going to say that the uh, business can get sued even though they're making the monthly payments. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, as long as the business can make those payments, the business shouldn't be affected. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to digress for just a moment off of what you specifically do and ask you a question that's actually related to your relationship with the judge in, in the court. Now, I understand that, you know, all these judges sitting on the on the bench uh, were lawyers, too, before uh, before they became a judge. But talk about your relationship with a judge, because I, I, I realize that part of the reason why you practice law in a specific area is that you get to kind of know who the judges are, what they're looking for, that sort of thing. So if you have a client who calls you from Duluth, you may elect to take that account, but at the same token, you may decide, hey, find some legal represent uh, representation in your area because the lawyer there might know the judge better. What's your thought on that? Yeah, that's especially true in state court, uh, bankruptcies, federal court. Mm -hmm. and, and currently, there's only four bankruptcy judges in the entire state of Minnesota. Wow. There's going to be a fifth one coming on in the middle of June. Mm -hmm. So out of 20-some thousand cases filed a year, five judges or four, four right now actually handle that volume. Mm -hmm. and, and I'd say 99 times out of 100, you never get to see a judge. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with a person called a trustee who's a part-time contract employee with the government. They're also a lawyer, but they're appointed by the United States Trustee's Office, which is underneath the Department of Justice wing. Mm -hmm. That's who kind of regulates bankruptcy, and that's who I deal with and my client would be um, interviewed by I during the process. Mm -hmm. Now, the actual time that you spend in front of a judge with the client going through this bankruptcy process from what i understand is basically a rubber stamp process i mean you can go to the bathroom and and miss your court date these <laughs> these go so quickly is, is that correct yeah that that is correct uh once a person files a bankruptcy there's typically only one hearing that hearing is called the meeting of the creditors uh Every uh, half hour, there's five meetings scheduled. Mm -hmm. So if you're right at the 2 o'clock calendar, your case may be done by 2.05. Wow. Um, so, yes, you're right. They're very short. It's kind of a casual process, but the bulk of the work is done before you file. Mm -hmm. When you show up to the trustee or meeting of the creditors, you're verifying what you already told the court. Uh, the bankruptcy petition is usually 50 to 60 pages long. It, it has two years' worth of your uh, income, a list of all your creditors, list of your assets, list of your income, your monthly expenses. It's quite a power-packed uh, uh, package, if you will. So mm -hmm. when you show up, the trustee is essentially verifying that everything in there is true, there's no corrections, things were accurately valued, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. A lot of big yes or no type questions at that hearing. Okay. Is there... When you mentioned about the meeting of creditors, and I've known some people that have gone through this bankruptcy process and expressed a fair amount of anxiety about this because apparently they had some relationship with 
whoever it was that they owed money to and they're concerned about these people showing up and there being a big issue. Do you ever see anything like that happen? Yeah, there's three ways you can have your bankruptcy challenged. There's a couple more, but the three main ones are your number one, your hiding assets. Mm -hmm. So if a creditor shows up to ask you questions, uh, they're limited to talking about your assets or the number two way is uh, your hiding income. Mm -hmm. So if you're working a second job or you have some oil well in North Dakota that pays you a <laughs> quarterly dividend and you're not disclosing that, that's how you can have your bankruptcy denied. Mm -hmm. uh, the third way is if you defraud a creditor. For example, if you took out a bank loan a year ago and you disclosed you made 150000 a year, turns out the creditor sees the last two years of what you made and it was only 50000 you could have that particular bank say, wait a sec, we gave you a loan based on your representation. You made 150000 We right. clearly see now with a document you filed with the court, you may nowhere near that. We're not okay with letting our debt be wiped out. Mm -hmm. So a creditor can file, it's called an adversary proceeding, to protect their debt from being wiped out mm -hmm. um, from the bankruptcy. So what we, let's say hypothetically somebody is dealing with that situation where, where the debt can't be wiped out. What's the next step for them? And, and what's, what would be the next step for the creditor? Well, uh, if the creditor is, is successful with this adversary proceeding, their debt is protected. Mm -hmm. So a person would uh, get out from underneath all their other debt. Mm -hmm. And once you emerge from the bankruptcy, you'd be left to deal with that particular creditor. And they okay. may work with you, they may not. Um, it's all up to the creditor. Mm -hmm. um, so you could have an ongoing court situation with this creditor once your bankruptcy ha has actually been finalized. Yes, you could, absolutely. Well, let's visit a little bit about the types of bankruptcies that are out there. You mentioned that you primarily handle both a Chapter 7 and a Chapter 13. Explain the differences between those two. Yep. Chapter 7 is a more common, roughly 75% of cases in Minnesota are Chapter 7. Uh, that's the one where you do not have to pay your creditors anything. Mm -hmm. As long as you qualify, you can wipe clean all your unsecured creditors. Mm -hmm. Unsecured means credit cards, medical bills, any anybody that doesn't have a lien on your assets. Mm -hmm. So you can't file a Chapter 7 and think you get to own your house for free or your car for free. That's a secured creditor. If you want to keep your home, you have to keep paying your mortgage, keep paying your mm -hmm. car note. Uh, the qualifier is based on how big your family is, and it's compared to the median income for that family size in the state of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So, for example, a uh, married couple with two children, the median income for a family of four is about 89000 mm -hmm. So if uh, that couple is making 100000 they'd make too much money. Uh, they would most likely have to file a Chapter 13. But if mm -hmm. you're underneath that threshold, you qualify, no questions asked. Okay. Well, you've, you've kind of stepped into this 13 a little bit, but describe really the, the essential differences between the two of them. Yeah, so uh, Chapter 7 is about a 90-day process once you file. Uh, you file a Chapter 7, 30 days later you have this meeting of the creditors, mm -hmm. and then 60 days after the meeting is how long it takes for the court to process the paperwork. Uh, and again, the only only person you pay is the fee to file bankruptcy and the court filing fee. You don't have to pay any other um, amounts to your creditors. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, the asterisk is if you have assets that are not protected. You know, if you have multiple boats or motorcycles, you may have to surrender some of those assets. But you, you don't have a payment plan like you would in a Chapter 13. Mm -hmm. uh, a Chapter 13 requires you to make monthly payments for a three, two, five-year period. Mm -hmm. If you make over the median income, you have to do a five-year plan. If you make under that $89,000 figure in my last example, you could propose a three-year plan. Mm -hmm. and, and there's reasons why you might want to do a 13 if you qualify for a Chapter 7. Chapter 13 can allow you to repay uh, past due child support past due taxes. If you got behind on your taxes, you can pay those taxes back through the protection of the courts, mm -hmm. protect the IRS from levying your assets or garnishing your wages. Mm -hmm. Or you can use Chapter 13 as a tool to save your home from foreclosure. You can pay back the uh, past due mortgage payments through a Chapter 13 with no interest, no late fees, no attorney fees. It, it can be used as a tool to save your home. 
Mm -hmm. How long do these uh, bankruptcies stay on your credit card report? Yeah, either a 7 or a 13, it's on there 10 years from the date of filing. Mm -hmm. That's the Fair Credit Reporting Act law. Now, a lot of people have been under the impression that's 7, but it's actually 10. It used to be 7. The Fair Credit Reporting Act was amended in 2008 to make it 10 years. So there's still some misinformation out there on the Internet, but it's definitely 10 years. Very good. I'm Kevin Hunter here on the Business Forum Show. We're visiting with John Lamy talking about uh, bankruptcy, the lovely subject that it is. Unfortunately, if that's a option that you have to pursue, uh, whether it's business or personal, John, you handle both of those kinds of situations, correct? Yes. Okay, so you can find uh, John Lamy at 651-209-3550. I'm Kevin Hunter here on the Business Forum Show. Don't go away. We'll be right back.